the last night of the show and so it's time for a video diary let's be walking up to the spike seeing a group of dodgy looking reprobates hanging around oh, look at them don't know the sort of people who want to run into on a cold Saturday night look at them dodgy dodgy St. Luke's estate round there. It's going to go up and uh, open up for them so they can get inside and do their acting. Hopefully I'll manage to impress someone tonight because I've had a shoddy job of it so far. Because I'm the big daddy and I've got to open everything up because only I can be trusted because I'm a very trustworthy individual. Right, I'm going to turn this off so you can't see the procedure of opening up. I think someone's been in today, the alarms are on. Right, I'll turn on lights here like that. Okay. Welcome to inside of Spike. And I've got to open up this one with this special key. Like that. So we get into a special room. There we are. I'm special too. I'm not. I'm going to open up this one. And we get a special exhibition room, which is where we start off show. Round like that, there we are. So this is where we're doing it. There's a nurse there. That's the forms from last night. We need to dispose of those yet. Okay, so now I'm going to go down and um, gonna, I might turn on the light, actually. That's going to help see things. Oh, I can't even see the bloody wall. Where's the wall? There we are. It's the thing about filming this is we can't film it because there's no light, it's too dark. Now this would be extremely creepy, but as we've been in here for a whole week now, I've kind of got used to it, and so it doesn't scare me anymore. I'm going to turn on these lights. There we are, turn them on. Turn on the lights in Bob's and John's room. This is where the show finishes. You won't see anything in here right now because it's uh, a very dim light LED. It takes quite a while to heat up as well, but good. That one's done, so back we go. Now back down the corridor there. That's the room where we do noises. So let me show you the other rooms. Not that you'll see anything. Uh, this is that's, that's Ian's room. You can't see that because it's dark. That's Mac's room. You can't see there because it's dark. That's where Tim and I hang out to scare the group in Catherine's room. You can't see in there because it's dark. That's Catherine's room. You can't see in there because it's dark. That's Bob walking away because he's disgusted by this. He's been disgusted by the whole thing. He's hated it. And this is Dill's room, which is also our, our roomy room, where we, where we gather together. Um, sobered up. Yeah, sobered up, just a bit. Now I've got to do with the stuff with getting people in here. No, that's, that's where I do the check-in bit. That's, the, that's what I see, and that's, that's Alice out there, but she's not allowed in. You're not allowed in. Can you leave the building? You're not allowed in here. This is for actors only. Oh, no, come back. I change your mind. Cause, not because I like you or you're any good, because we can't do it without you. Yeah, whatever. Why is that pen? <coughs> These have to be signed each night, but I'm signing them as Amy, although it looks like my signature, although it's, it says the word Amy, which is playing with my mind. She doesn't care. Yeah. Done them.
No, no, look, they can just take all signed. Twenty-six to go with the eleven that's out there ready. Well, there's an audience of thirty-five. Someone is an extra. We haven't got customers, <coughs> customers out there, have we? No. no. Well, there's, Ca there's Catherine's boyfriend. Philip, well, okay. where's this guy? This? Yeah. Um, let's go into the police. <laughs> On Facebook or? What? Yeah. Oh, and and, and YouTube. I'm doing a video dance since last night. Oh, okay. Who's that? Oh, so, oh, so no bloody stagecraft. Thing? No, I can't find the whole thing because oh. well, it's in the dark. Exactly. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> hey! But I'll do the last bit. Uh, oh, because I'll do bits of it. I'll, I'll do little bits here and there so we get a, a, a little memory of it. It's maybe just try and maybe try and get a screaming when Amy Grasby. Maybe to, just just. Try well, I won't be in the room then. Oh, I can, I can film it. I can. I mean, I, well, I can get the sound. I'm not going to get the actual thing happening because I won't be in the room. Just, just scream. Just, just scream. Yeah, it'd be the noise of it. Oh, right. and I'm going to show you what my eye view is of you actually coughing at the door and running around the corner every seven minutes. <laughs> oh, the eye view. Okay. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Come. I can narrate it. This is Malin. She comes from Sweden. <laughs> Swedes do that. <laughs> oh, that go oh, go another way, way, Mac. Would you like to ask for the last picture of my bed? Sorry? Yeah, okay. Have you got a torch? Yeah. yeah. Right. <clears throat> you, just, you want a little reminder of it for yourself. That's why you're doing it. <laughs> I know I know these things, my dear. Oh, it's very dark in here now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's my side. Tim's door's still locked, so the scratch's going to have to come from my side of it tonight again. Oh, it's still locked. This is fascinating. God, I'm really enjoying this bit. Uh, so this is tying up the bed every night. And you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Double knot it so it doesn't come undone. Very clever. Look at uh, that. And he pulls, look at that. He's, so it doesn't attach anything. So it's not quite so obvious. That's, uh, very good, he's good. The door. That's brilliant. So That's the door. Room. Thank you very much. This, this, okay, guys. May I, may I have guys, 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 keep focus, guys. Thank you very much. Well do. <laughs> Boo! I am spooky ghost. Right, we're in, going into. Oh, I've got, I've got a friend in there, so I can't talk. Going into, into Max cell now. Hello. There's, Mike lives around here. This is Mike's corner. I'm still focusing because it's so spooky. Uh, Mike's, Mike's house. Thank you for that. Well done. Well done, you. <laughs> oh, he's got he's got a seaty bit. Yeah, he's got a seaty bit. Yeah, I, I, mo most people ignore it. There was one person who did sit down it, but if they do, they don't get to see Mike at all. No. Oh, well, well, up, so. it was there. I can't really say he's going to stand up. Should be so selfish. We do the Macarena in the cell every night for 20 minutes before the show goes on. Well, I think you should film it with your own camera. I think you make a little, one of your little um, oh, yeah, Vine videos. Goose uh, now back again. Ah, ah, you don't know what we've seen. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I dropped my pen. Oh, no. so this, is, this is Joe's Heidi room. When he's done the coughing at Dill's door and has to run out before anybody sees him. That's where he hides himself. And he might that actually out, out of order. She's scary. Oh, look at that, done it again. Right, the first people have just arrived, so I'm going to go and, uh, and do the thing, yeah. Ah! You've got a license to film. Yeah, I have, so shut, shut your face. Yeah? Hospital. <laughs> right, let's get people, all people. Building, long history in Guildford's community, and also 
a long history of unexplained occurrences reported by neighbours, passers by, so we are very, very pleased to welcome the Self Surrey Spectral Society. Is Amy in there? Oh, right, you can come in as well if you want. Yeah, I've seen it once, I'll see it again. measurements and things I don't fully understand, but uh, they will prepare a presentation of their findings and they will be presenting those to you tonight. Uh, just a bit of housekeeping before we can begin, this is a very old building, uh, a few things. You will have all been given a waiver on entry into the building. We do insist that you sign the front sheet of those and return them to a member of Spike staff before you can begin this evening. That's myself, Timothy or Philip there at the back. Uh, we'll come around and get those shortly. Um, Fire exits as well. The fire alarm is unmistakable. It is loud, it is irritating, and it doesn't stop. If you hear that noise, you will be guided out of the building. This door just behind me is a fire exit. It is open. Also, the door that you enter the building through, quite naturally, is similarly a fire exit. There is also one down further at the other end of the building, if you should be down that way at the time it goes off, which it will not. We do not expect you to go anywhere unaccompanied. You will at all times be with one of the ushers, one of the spike staff, or with a member of the South West Surrey Spectral Society. You are not expected to go anywhere alone, so you will be guided swiftly and safely to one of those fire exits if that does occur, which I highly, highly doubt. Now then, um, I've also been asked by the group to make sure that you turn off any devices. Did you want to clarify yeah, yeah, what um, you meant? Right. Before we start the tour tonight, I'm going to ask everyone to switch off your mobile phones. Uh, and as the tour is going to be, absolutely no photography or recording of any kind. Uh, and also, no use of your own torches. Um, the EM signature from any electronic device that you use uh, will be the EM signature that we've got running. Yes, there's an awful lot of expensive measurement kit on site. That's the that reason behind that one. Thank you. Well, if you just take a moment to do that this evening, that would be wonderful. Mm. Uh, I just want to let you know, uh, it should be, we should be with us for about an hour and a half this evening. There will not be a break this evening, so hopefully if you do need to take a stop, please do so now. Um, and if you do feel for any reason you are unable to carry on, it is, it's a dark building, it's old, Please make yourself known to one of your ushers, uh, one of myself, Timothy, Philip there at the back, or indeed to a member of the team, and we will see you out. Um, now then, did you want to? Where was he gone? Did you want to introduce your team so you know who you'll be following this evening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, Hello, I, I'm Mac, and together with my associates here, uh, we are the South West Surrey Spectral Group. Yeah, we actually have a website. If anyone wants to join us up. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to tell you a little bit about, about us uh, and how the team is going to work. Um, I, I formed uh, SouthSpec just over five years ago to bring real scientific rigour to the investigation of uh, paranormal uh, instances. Um, there, there is so much that, that humankind needs to understand about both itself uh, and the environment that it inhabits. If you think about it, a human being is an incredibly complex biological system of chemical reactions and energy states, all wrapped up in an envelope of sensory receptors that are both surrounded by and um, covered through with fields of electromagnetic radiation. And, and we in SAUSPEC are, are dedicated to comprehending uh, the nature of human existence uh, and, and how we are part of the environment that we inhabit. And that's not like a mission statement, if you were. Um, Ian, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, Ian, Chief Scientific and Measurement Officer for the group. Thank you. <laughs> and as you can see, Ian is very focused on, on, the, on the data. Um, we do pride ourselves on collecting empirical evidence um, so that we've got a sound scientific basis for the theories that we are developing. Um, quite frankly, there, there are some things out there that, that are just charlatans. Uh, Catherine? <laughs> Hi guys, um, I'm Catherine. I'm a medium <coughs> which basically means I'm on a spiritual level, which is actually just as credited as the scientific part. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, sorry, don't get me wrong. We're, we're within the South Spec team, we, we are fully equipped 
to, uh, to cover all aspects of how we 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 cover all the bases. Uh, we've got the full skill set here. Uh, Alice? Hi, um, hi. Yeah, I'm Alice. Um, I'm kind of the historian of the group, so I really like delving into the stories and the places we go to. And I think the spike is a really um, exciting site to look at. So, yeah. um, deal? Uh, hi, <coughs> hi. Uh, my my name's Dil. Uh, um, right. So on to this evening. Um, over the years, the, the, the number of comments that have been made by volunteers here at the spike, and indeed some of the residents in the St Luke's development around the building. Uh, about strange noises, unexpected sensations, and, and in some cases objects moving inexplicably, um, gave rise to, to the need for a, a paranormal investigation. So, so we've been called in here uh, to do our work. We've actually been on site for, for over two weeks now. We arrived on Saturday, the 25th of November. In that time, we've collected a wealth of data. We've, we've done a lot of work. We haven't had much sleep. Uh, so, so do, do please bear with us if we get a bit frazzled, and I know I am running purely on adrenaline at the moment. Um, what we'd like to do is, is talk you through some of the, the key findings that we've had in, in, in our time here. Um, I'm going to do that by uh, dividing you down in, into five small groups, um, and we'll take you around the building uh, to visit five separate <coughs> rooms where a member of Southbeck will talk to you about what they've been doing over the last two weeks. Now, this is only a, a brief summary of what we've been doing, um, just the highlights, if you will. Um, once you've done the tour, you are bound to have a lot of questions from what you've seen and from what you've heard. So what we'll do is we'll gather everyone together back in the, in the combined group uh, here in the lecture room, um, and we'll just have that as an open forum, so you can ask what you want to know more about uh, and work with you all of the details. Um, what I would ask is that you are, uh, as you are touring the building, do please stay calm. Uh, there is nothing here that can hurt you, and as professionals in the paranormal field, uh, we can assure you of your safety. Uh, what I would ask, though, is that you do stay in your groups, don't go off on your own, um, and please don't open up any doors that are closed, because we've got our equipment running in those, in those rooms to see if the presence of a, of a larger group of people moving through the building has an impact on the level of uh, paranormal activity that we've detected. You can see Ian at the moment is just getting some, some background audio level to establish a baseline so that we can then cut through uh, to the signals that we're going to collect from, from the cells. Um, I think that's probably about all I need to explain about how the evening's going to work. Just before you continue, uh, I mentioned to you earlier we were supposed to have two other speakers to open this evening. Uh, yes, two other gentlemen hoping to, were hoping to be here at the beginning of this evening. Two military gentlemen. They entered the building back in the 1970s. Actually, the building was still closed to the public at this time. It wasn't uh, done up as you see it now. Uh, they actually broke in in order to do some investigations of their own. And we were hoping they'd be here in order to give you sort of um, an explanation of their findings, maybe compare them with the modern group, and also a, a brief bit on the history of the group. They are still hoping to be here, but they may have to arrive later in the evening, so perhaps we'll find some time for you to speak to them after you've been around your five rooms. But uh, as we're now missing the, uh, sort of the introduction to the history of the building, I'm just going to ask Timothy to give you a brief summary. Well, um, yeah, hello. Um, welcome to the Spike. Um, you may not know the, the history of this building. At the moment, you're standing on the site of the Guildford Union Workhouse, which was built in 1836, off the back of the recently uh, passed Poor Laws. Uh, not much of that workhouse now remains, although you might have seen over the, the far side of the, the greenery over there, there's one house which actually used to be the married couple's accommodation of the original workhouse. Um, this building itself was built in 1905. This is the casual wall meaning that it's the home for itinerant workers, vagrants, and tramps, and so on, who would have had accommodation here for only one night at a time. Um, moving on from then, it, it continued to be a, a, a home for the, the homeless uh, until the First World War, when it was taken over by the military and used as a military hospital, 
there's a return to the trust shortly after the war, um, but there was a, a move after then to turn it into more of a medical facility, there having been a, a fairly sizable infirmary established. Um, during the Second World War, um, a lot of the, Lon the London hospitals were taken up with uh, air raid casualties, so a lot of the research uh, facility was moved out into uh, sites in, uh, further out in the country, and this is one of them. Um, this is actually the site of some of the pioneering work that was done in Britain on uh, radiotherapy and so on. And so this moved to become a hospital carried on and it was fully converted in the 60s, except for this one building, which was still used to, to house homeless families uh, as late as 1968. Um, now, the, uh, the various buildings were, were demolished and converted and so on. But the whole thing was mothballed in, in the late 90s and then restored into this lovely museum uh, in uh, 2003. Uh, but moving back to the, um, the history of this particular unit, uh, as I said, it was home to itinerant workers, uh, vagrants, uh, and so on. And the, by the very nature of it, then being allowed to stay only one night at a time, there's a lot of sort of uh, people exploiting the system. Uh, the, the reason for this was that there were so many uh, coming through the area at the time. Over 30,000 vagrants were coming through Guildford alone in, in a year. So you can see it was a significant problem at the time. Hence, the need for places such as this and the harsh conditions under which they operated, which I hope uh, you will be finding more out about later today. Um, I, I think that's all before we get going. Can I just ask that um, if you've not handed back the front sheet of your waivers, uh, the back sheet you can keep, that's good information for you, but please hand it back to a member of Spike staff, that's myself or Timothy or Philip there. Oh, well, they're, they're your waiting forms. I, I thought we could have them, and then we want that these people about future investigations we do around your N No, I think it's best that we keep them to build the records. Seven, uh, but we can't take more than seven in, in a room. Um, so if you'd like to pack yourself together in groups of seven. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? All been handed in. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, a member of South Let's Collect your room. Thank you all. Thank you. All right, I should say, ladies and gentlemen, uh, before each session starts, the group here have timers to count them in. Did they will hear me? Uh, doing a rattle before yeah. it starts, so so don't think it's legions of the dead or anything like that. It's just me letting them know it's time just to start. Need to be careful to uh, stick to our times. And yeah. Keep them off. They're here. We were received. Yes.
Jones in there with his lock. He just shut the door. He's through there. Max with his lock in here. Catherine's with her lock through here. There's Joe. Um, so let me start off by you a little bit about the sort of things that we're now in the cell, putting my socks on. These make sure they don't hear me pacing around. That's the dust of the touch them. That's the wafty thing. Those are my shoes. stuff in a nice warm room. Some commercial value, and in fact, uh, the peers in walls and buildings locally 
but the real driving force uh, was uh, you know, that we should not get something like um, I got into ghost hunting in the paranormal uh, through electronics and detection. That was the type of child. Right, that's enough of him. Let's listen to Mac. So this is it, that was the last ever group. So now doing it, they're now doing it for the last ever time. I am bringing the rattle back. Oh look, oh bless, look what she's done. Thermal insulation. It's amazing, it's like Christmas. <laughs> Brilliant, look there's Joe's one up there. <laughs> so who's, who's amongst this lot? So the cast party is tidying this up, yeah? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'll find the record here, and it's got to be cleared up later. Got to go back and, uh, and do some. It's nice, isn't it? Are they all in the end room? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, no, no one's in the end room. They're all in their final cells the final for the last time. Not time to yeah. Oh, look at her. She's been to the ugly bug ball. <laughs> clock's off the wall. They noted the clock was off the wall last night. The clock's not on the wall anymore. They thought it was significant. Do you mind? <laughs> it's a three-eyed ghost there. There is through this lens anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, better get back. Let's let's go up there and see what they're up to. That's it. They're over now. Never say it again. It's all done. No more Lethbridge. No more Agnes. No more seepage. No more Mr. Shroud. You got another scary tonight. Oh Christ, it was Emily. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> so here's here's our death room. 
and we'll all, we'll all be in here afterwards when we're all dead. Everyone's having a, a nice well-earned rest now. Well done, everybody. Can I, can I have a biscuit? Look at that one. Amy has gone completely loopy with all the waiver forms. She has excelled. She's, she's filled up the grill. <laughs> the, the, the skylight thing. It's just filled up with everybody's screwed up forms she's now. Got a hobby. <laughs> 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 well, that one, well done. Thank you. Welcome. How's that for you, Everyone's going to be dead along the wall just there. I'd say well done, Malin, but I've no idea. I presume it was well done. Well, I'm going to go back down and film some stuff that Bob and John are doing because Ebbets just started. I've got a biscuit. Surrey Group and uh, our assessment of their findings. <coughs> um, I find uh, their methods, their scientific methods, adequate, mm -hmm. but I find the conclusions that they reach, um, yes, very fanciful. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not suggesting for a moment that they're not sincere. You know, I wouldn't describe the Southwest Surrey Spectral Group as a bunch of charlatans. Um, but nevertheless, um, they seem to me to draw uh, difficult, uh, uh, strange conclusions from, from or the, the sort of minimal evidence. I think one of the things they may have told you about is, is you know, they set up temperature measurement things. Um, and uh, <laughs> they find, you know, that the temperature goes down for a period of time by, I don't know, three degrees Celsius or something like that. Um, and that is taken as evidence of some sort of paranormal activity. Um, frankly, in an old building like this, the temperature goes up and down like a yoga. Um, and <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm afraid I look for a scientific and a rational um, answer to these things rather than these um, rather <coughs> imaginative uh, conclusions that they reach. But, but, Having said that, in the course of our investigations, um, you, we did come across occasionally uh, an occurrence, a phenomenon that we couldn't explain, that I couldn't find a reasonable explanation for it. And that was the case here at the spike. Um, the first thing was a recording, which we got here. Yeah, hang on a sec, I think. You, you, do, you do have to listen very carefully, because whenever you set up, <coughs> this was in a closed room. This was a room, bars at the windows, you know, all that sort of thing. Door locked, nothing in the room at all, stone floor. Um, you do get 
a sort of background noise if you get this very sensitive equipment. But if you listen, listen carefully, you may hear something else. Go on, go on. Why isn't that working? There we go. Second one is is interesting. Mm. This one you can see, I think, in this light. This is a, 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 this was a fixed camera taking photographs at intervals in a room. And on the right hand side of there, there's there's a shape. Now you can't identify the shape, but there appears to be a hand and there appears to be a leg. Yeah. Um, now I have absolutely no explanation for that at all. If we start that one going around as well, you can see all I mean, down the right hand side. So you do get um, things recorded on camera, on sound recording equipment, that you can't actually have to, you know, find a, a reasonable explanation for. Now my, my take on it is that, that simply means that um, we're not clever enough. Um, you know, and uh, I think almost certainly there's some sort of scientific explanation for it, but I don't know what it is. And the suggestion is that she was, if, if there was foul play, she was more likely to be the, um, the, the, the perpetrator of the foul play than her husband, who was a somewhat meek creature. Um, the other explanation, of course, is that, you know, if it was a spell of bad weather, um, you could get sudden increases in the death rate because by definition the people who came to the spike were um, they were homeless they were almost certainly severely malnourished they were almost certainly carrying lots of diseases um, uh, and, and, and were ill themselves so you know but, but the point about it is that you, places like this did generate the sort of um, almost hysteria that accompanied this particular case and the manager suffered for. Um, we found when we were investigating that a couple of, uh, well, a photograph. I've got a couple of copies here. We've had them enhanced so they're, um, they're, they're easy to see. Of the, um, the manager and this formidable lady, his wife, if you'd like to pass that round and have a look at them. Um, you can, you, can, you can see, I think, that she's a fairly severe <coughs> creature. Um, and, uh, no idea. The, the team are waiting. Well, supposed, in the... There's no one supposed to be in there. All our equipment is in there. I know, but yeah. the team is supposed to be at the other end of the building. They're waiting back in that exhibition room for everybody when you finish in here. Yeah. Will you bear with us a moment? Uh, chomp, chomp, chomp. Let's see what's going on. Thank you. Oops. Oh, yeah. Oh,
two and should be waiting for another stop. <coughs> just tell do us in mind the steps down there. It should be pretty well lit by now. We've all just pulled. Oh, wow. Oh, dead. Oh, I was just, we were told I'd get up. There was a voice outside that said, alright, you can get up now. Oh, and they went all gone. <laughs> so who said, alright, get up? I did. Oh, right. Because <laughs> we waited for a few minutes. Oh, right, they are meant to be shepherded out. That was, it's never mind, it's too late now. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. Hello, Dill. Great. Did you get the screen? Yeah. You did? Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, I'm going to belt it out for the sake of that. <laughs> well done. You went up there, I think. Oh. I didn't hear comments about you. Yeah, but no, for, no, first time. Well done. First time. Thank you. I did my best. Well, yeah. Know, it was adequate. Yeah. yeah. It's all about the fact. Yeah. Yeah. Nearly didn't get the fact out. Well done. Oh, she's gone blurry. Oh, bless. There she is. Hello. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> get, go on. Go. If you're not in it, get out. <laughs> <laughs> there we are, room reset. It's about 15 minutes after the show's finished, if not even that, 10 minutes or so. And already all the chairs are clear, put it back to how it was. Lights out. Bye.